When you think of the word rhythm, what is the first thing that pops into your head? I'm sure it's different for everyone. It may be your favorite song, maybe the idea of sheet music, or it could be, I don't know, the... Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I lost that. Okay. <laughs> Whatever it is, though, most of you probably have thought of something along the lines of music or something musically related. When we look at the Merriam-Webster definition of rhythm, though, there's actually nothing that points to music. Um, the definition is as follows, a regular repeated pattern of sounds or movements. When we really think about this definition, it can apply to so many different parts of our life, um, including just the basic human bodily functions. Things such as our heartbeat, our breathing rate, our walking pace, and even just our daily routine as a whole. And it's kind of interesting to think that a lot of people, when they think of rhythm, all they think about is music. That's the first thing that usually pops into someone's head. But there's so much more things in life that um, are related to rhythm. And um, I feel like the reasons behind um, why people usually go towards music is because music is one of the only ways in which rhythm um, is consciously thought of um, where we actually think about how there's like a pattern and <laughs> how there's actually a pattern. Um, our heartbeat, our breathing rate, and even our walking pace, or even our daily routine, usually we don't think about how that is rhythmic while it's happening, but music, when you're thinking about music, you understand that there is a rhythm to it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how music can affect our internal rhythm, um, which we can use to shape um, our mind, our body, and even our mindset. Okay, I'm going to start out telling you I'm not a music expert, but I am a music enthusiast. So um, I decided to um, look up some information to share with you guys um, based off of things that I'm really passionate about personally. Okay, so how music can affect the mind. Um, music alone, usually you're not going to um, become smarter just because you listen to music on a regular basis. But when you mix music with um, thinking at like a high level, usually... Um, that's what's going to make you retain information better. So um, there was a study done by um, George Lazanov. He's a Bulgarian psychologist, and he um, wanted to make it easier to learn foreign languages. So he um, made this program where he used um, a set of students and um, he used methods incorporating... Um, uh, Baroque style music, which is an age of music from about 1600 to 1750. And um, what he found is like the first day he was able to teach the students about a thousand words, which is about half the curriculum, and they had a 92% retention rate, which is crazy actually. And um, within 30 days, he was able to teach them the entire course, and they had about an 85 to 100% retention rate. And then he came back four years later and found that they had, almost all of them had nearly 100% retention of everything that they learned during that 30-day um, period. Um, so this leads into um, the idea that um, slower music, um, usually stuff from like the Baroque period and stuff by Mozart, is actually um, very helpful when you're trying to retain information to use um, as background music or just um, to help you um, begin your thinking. So um, next time you're doing your homework or something, um, think about that and how um, things that have about 60 beats per minute, which you can calculate um, by like clapping along with the, with the music to the beat for 15 seconds and then multiplying that by four and figuring that out. Okay, next I'm going to talk about uh, music in the body. Um, when you're working out, the best um, amount of time, um, the best beats per minute for um, a typical song is 120 to 140 beats per minute for you to listen to. Um, they found this, there was a study done by, um, I'm so sorry. There's a study done by the Research Institute for Sport and Exercise Sciences in the UK. Um, in 2010, they took um, they took 12 uh, people who um, were working out on um, bicycles, and they, over a three-day period, they, um, the first day, they listened to six songs while they were doing their exercise at the normal rate. The second day, they t 
took those six songs, they did the same exercise, and they sped it up by 10%, and then the last day they took those, that same exercise and they decreased it by 10%. And they found that the second day they had the most um, success um, physically. So um, through this, they found that 120 to 140 beats per minute is usually a very good place for song workout. Also, it's very good to mix up your songs because um, when a song that you enjoy comes on um, that you were not ready to hear, uh, it releases dopamine because your excitement um, allows for that, and that causes excitement. Okay, um, music and mindset. So mindset is basically how you want to feel when you go into a certain situation. So if you um, really evaluate how much you want, um, how you want to feel in a certain situation, you want to listen to music that fits that. So um, there was um, a psychologist, her name is Amy Mills, and she came up with this idea of conscious listening, and you want to evaluate um, who you are when you listen to the song, what, who you can be, and what you believe about it helps you. And if you come up with a certain amount of songs that fit this, um, that will be helpful in creating a playlist for that. Okay, so to go over, um, you want to go slower pace for your mind, body you want to go at a faster pace, and for your mindset you want to do whatever feels right and encourages positive, um, whatever you want to feel like. Um, and I just want to leave with this quote um, by Bono, and it says, music can change the world because music can change people.